Good afternoon and welcome to Use PR to Manage Your Online Reviews and Online Reputation. We're glad you're here. First of all, for our audience today, we want you to know we are recording this webinar for promotional purposes. All rights are reserved and the copyright in all this material uh, contained in this presentation are owned by Axia Public Relations or licensed to such. Um, any rebroadcast is prohibited without permission. So we're glad you're here today. We're going to be talking about managing your reputation and we're going to be doing so with hashtag managing reputation. If you have any questions, please tweet them to Axia PR on Twitter. And if you're not on Twitter, uh, feel free to post your questions through the questions tab um, on the GoToWebinar session that we're having here today. So real quick, I want to introduce myself. I'm Jason Mudd, founder and CEO of Axia Public Relations. I'm an Emmy-winning accredited public relations practitioner, speaker and author, and PR Week named me a rising star of PR. I'm accredited in public relations, uh, certified in inbound marketing, graduated from the University of Missouri School of Journalism, and have represented a number of global brands that you're very familiar with, as well as brands that you're either not yet familiar with or perhaps aren't doing business in a market where you have had exposure to. Uh, my company is Axia Public Relations, a public relations firm empowering companies to build strong brands and great reputation through news media, social media, blogging, thought leadership, speaking awards, and recognition. And we're going to talk about all that today as we discuss the importance of building a strong brand and a great reputation through managing your reputation. Today's agenda is pretty packed. We're going to talk a lot about reputation management. What is it? Why it's important? What does it look like? How do you know when you need it? When, how does it happen? How do you fix it? How long does it take? What to watch out for? What does it cost? What if I don't have a problem today? Who's this for? Success stories. How do we get started? And more, including how to respond to negative reviews. So hopefully you've got something to take notes with and you're as excited as we are to make this presentation to you today. First of all, Warren Buffett is arguably the most successful businessman in the world. And this is a great quote and one I'd like to start out with for our presentation today. Uh, Warren Buffett is somewhat well known for saying it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. And the truth is that most people don't even pay attention and often omit the second part of this quote. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. And that's what we're here to talk about today is how to do things differently, both ethically in your business, of course, but also how to do things differently knowing that at some point that five minutes could happen at any time anywhere by anybody in your organization and damage your good reputation what is reputation management according to wikipedia it's understanding and, inf and influencing of an individual's or business's reputation it was originally coined as a pr term uh, and today, some people use online reputation management to differentiate between traditional reputation management. But either way, in public relations, that's been something that we've been talking about for decades is reputation management. And in the advancement of the web and social media, uh, it makes it an overwhelmingly an issue of search results and what happens on search engines. I often talk to clients and others by referring to it as modern day window shopping and first impressions on Google. So when someone types in your company name or your product name or your name as an individual, what they see on Google is the modern day representation of your, rep your reputation as well as your brand. Uh, your brand is often your reputation. Even if you, quote, rebrand yourself, uh, which is a lot more than just changing your logo, rebranding is how you are positioned in the marketplace. And your reputation is exactly how you're positioned in the marketplace. So let's talk more about this. First of all, this is not just SEO. A lot of times people think that reputation management is just another word for SEO. And they often make the mistake of hiring an SEO company to provide them 
with reputation management. And normally that doesn't work out very well at all. So in addition, um, you'll see that when you're searching for Acme widgets, you'll see the words scam, bogus, ripoff, terrible, worst product ever kind of auto load or uh, off being offered as a suggestion uh, by Google. And that's because Clark Howard and other consumer advocates for years have encouraged consumers to search with long tail keyword searches. So if your business is a bank, they might search for the bank name and review, or if you're selling your car dealership, they might search for your car dealership name with the word review, scam, rip off, or fraud after it to see what comes up. And it's always interesting to see what these searches uh, produce. And you should be doing this on a regular basis for your company. My hunch is if you're on our webinar today, you're probably already dealing with a reputation management issue or concern that there might be one, as you should be. So let's just continue. Uh, why is it important? The main reason for customer churn is actually due to the overall poor quality of customer service, not price. And a lot of times when you're in business, we think that price is the number one driver. And price is an important driver and often or occasionally the primary driver for some consumers and buyers. But if you're happy with the service, you're probably not going to just spend the time to shop around for a better price. You're going to think twice about moving to a different company because of the quality and the service that you are getting. And then Bain and company, who we use a lot when doing market research and uh, quoting research says a customer is four times more likely to defect to a competitor if the if the problem is a service related other than price or product related. And for every customer complaint, there are 26 other unhappy customers who have remained silent and oftentimes feel the same. I've heard some people say that they believe for every one customer that complains about something, probably as many as a hundred other people feel the same way, but haven't taken the time to communicate such, whether by email, phone call, in person, or even a letter. So that's good and inf important information. So is that a dissatisfied customer will tell between nine to 15 people about their experience. Happy customers who get their issue resolved tell about four to six people about their experience. And that's from the White House Office of Consumer Affairs. So important information for you to keep in mind as a business owner or as a someone doing marketing, uh, public relations, or managing reputation. Here's some statistics I'm going to throw at you uh, very quickly uh, to set some background for us today. Uh, Harris Interactive is where uh, these factoids are coming from. 86% of online U.S. adults use search engines to find more information about another person. And keep in mind, you have to talk about online U.S. adults because not all adults are online. So of the adults that are online, which are probably your um, top consumers and uh, more affluent, 86% of them are using the web to learn more information about other people. 75% of the same audience have searched their own name in a search engine. And 48% of them uh, said that most of their search results about them are not positive. Uh, I found that statistic to be quite surprising, uh, fascinating, concerning, and interesting. That tells me that nearly half of the people listening to this webinar have something negative about them on the search engines. And then 30% of U.S. adults uh, searched their name and said nothing shows up about them. That actually doesn't surprise me when you omit social media. But when you factor in social media, I do find that number to be a little bit surprising. And then 31% of online U.S. adults that have searched another person have looked up a politician. Of those, half said the search influenced their voting decision. And the web, as we're seeing in, in every presidential election, is becoming more and more prominent and significant to the campaign. And then 42% of U.S. adults searched for someone before they ended up doing business with them. 45% of U.S. adults that have searched someone else before doing business with them have found something that made them decide not to do business with them. So think about that. That means that um, they're window shopping you on Google. And before they do business with you, they search for you online. And they found something that made them decide not to do business with them. 45%, that's nearly half the people 
that are doing business that are opted not to do business with another company. Okay, and then 43% of US adults have searched for something for someone else online have also searched um, a potential date or significant other or an ex-boyfriend uh, making romantic searches one of the most common searches among US adults. I was not aware of that. Uh, and that was an interesting fact. So what does it look like? So the top left example is what you don't want to have the search engines look like. And the bottom example is probably what you would like to have the search engines look like if you were Chop Brothers Construction. And what you obviously don't want to have happen is a lot of negative listings pop up under the Google Suggest as the image to the right shows. Okay, so the bottom left would be where the first thing people are seeing on Google is negative reviews, negative comments, negative first impressions when window shopping for your company. That's going to make people run away from your business and never want to do business with you. The bottom example is what a clean, uh, positive online reputation looks like and exactly what you want to have people see uh, with your domain, your website first, and then other websites positively endorsing or referencing your company. How do you know when you need it? Well, these are the common places where people will go and post complaints. And I wanted to talk about each one of these for just a brief moment. So Ripoff Report is probably the most prominent. Uh, it's operated by a guy in Southwest United States. Um, and you know he founded the website as a way for people to go on and voice their opinion anonymously or otherwise about businesses. And I've spoken to him before. He's an interesting guy. Uh, but the one thing you need to know about Ripoff Report is once a customer places a complaint on that website, they will never take it down. And even if they receive a court order to take it down, they will still fight that court order. So a customer, a consumer, everyone who is on this webinar may at some point opt to go online to Ripoff Report and vent and complaint and rant and then a few days later feel like man that was really rude maybe unfair uh, emotional i've changed my mind or they finally made it right or i wish i wouldn't have said that well guess what your comments are now their property they will not allow you to edit them and a lot of people are very surprised to learn that and obviously the person who made the complaint is upset when they want to change it and they can't and the business is obviously upset that they've made the customer, made things right with the customer, patched things up, but they still can't change it. Uh, complaints board is one that will allow um, your, you to either edit your complaint or there are ways you can get your business's complaints removed by that service. And that's something that our company has done successfully for other clients. Um, Indeed and Glassdoor are mostly websites where people report about their employment experience at a company, their perceptions of working at a company, and um, and so those are those sites actually weren't originally intended for that, but that's what they've really become is a community of sharing your opinion about working at a company, and so a lot of companies are obviously very concerned about their online reputation on employment websites and job boards so that they can attract the very best candidate. Uh, Piss customer is, in my experience, a little less visible than complaints board and ripoff report, but it's growing in popularity. And it's exactly that. It's a, it's a platform, a channel, a community for upset customers to communicate their beef and their gripes and tell the world about it. Uh, Convo Pointer is uh, not yet officially launched, um, but I have met the entrepreneur behind this business. And uh, without going into a lot of detail here, I will tell you that if you're in PR and marketing in the corporate arena, you need to be keeping an eye out for uh, Convo Pointer uh, when and if uh, they do get launched. Uh, this is going to be a game changer for the ability for consumers to publish complaints into the marketplace and share their opinions um, in the marketplace about um, cons about issues uh, and topics. Uh, we'll be watching that closely to see if that company launches and their website uh, and their online tool becomes public. Uh, the Better Business Bureau is well known and notorious. Um, and uh, obviously when someone files a complaint with the BBB, uh, that complaint is often published online and uh, viewable by others. Uh, 
you know, the Better Business Bureau has its own reputation management issue where people say you can buy, um, you can end up buying your own uh, review in a positive way. And there's some credible concerns about how the Better Business Bureau operates. And we have blogged about that on our blog at axiapr.com slash blog or blog.axiapr.com. Uh, take a look at that, those articles. Uh, actually, the one we wrote about the Better Business Bureau is one of our most popular blog posts, and we would encourage you to check that out. Uh, Yelp is a review site, a uh, product review, service review website that's growing in popularity, uh, one that I've recently started using personally uh, to share both good and bad experiences. Uh, really, is just a way to uh, voice to a community of consumers uh, the good, bad, and the ugly of your experiences. And I've posted both positive reviews and negative reviews there, um, you know, on a monthly basis when I have an outstanding experience or uh, an incredibly negative experience. Uh, I added Amazon.com and mostly just to not to make sure we don't overlook the idea of making sure our products are getting good reviews as well. And obviously, wherever your product is carried online, Best Buy, Amazon, Target, Walmart, etc., consumers have the opportunity to leave feedback. And, you know, don't overlook eBay as well. So depending on where you are selling your products and services in the marketplace, uh, you'll want to keep an eye, eye out on how well your, your products are performing based on those reviews as well. Uh, we've been recently contacted by a company who has negative, um, well, they have a good mix, I would say, of both positive and negative re product reviews on Amazon. And they're saying, how can we encourage our customers to, you know, put positive reviews. And so we're working with them on that. And we're going to give away some of those tips here in this webinar if you'll just continue with us. I already mentioned Glassdoor. And then another one is Consumer Affairs, which is very similar to PISS customer, in my experience, uh, very similar to Complaints Board and Ripoff Report. Probably not as prominent as those, but they will continue to, um, uh, to grow in popularity in my estimation. Uh, I would say Consumer Affairs, uh, like uh, Ripoff Report is trying to become more like the Better Business Bureau by offering corporations memberships and ways that they can respond to feedback and get accredited. Uh, the truth is I'm not sure how much value that accreditation has other than perception, um, but consumer perception is everything. Perception is reality and certainly something worth considering. I just want to remind everybody, if you have questions uh, during this live session, feel free to post those questions through our GoToMeeting uh, question panel. If you want to tweet them to us uh, during the live webinar and even outside the live webinar, because we will be recording this and replaying it on our website, uh, I'd encourage you to do that as well. So how does it happen? How does online reputation happen? And you know that question is mostly geared towards the negative. So if you, as I tell clients all the time, if you have thousands of customers and 99% of them are happy, but 1% are not, that 1% can very quickly become a vocal minority. So 1% of 1,000 or 10,000 or 100,000 or a million customers quickly adds up to be a large number, especially if the 99% aren't complaining or I'm sorry, aren't leaving comments, aren't leaving positive reviews, and instead all the marketplace is seeing as negative reviews, they become the vocal minority very quickly. And you can see from, you know, the, uh, the funny artwork here on this slide, you know, uh, it looks like it could be a, a, a busy diner and perhaps someone was overlooked. Perhaps they were short staffed uh, that day and the owner was gone and couldn't make the proper adjustments or maybe there was a medical emergency um, or other, um, you know, a popular event in the area driving more traffic than normal. But apparently somebody waited 30 minutes for no service, and this was their way of complaining. Um, it's clever. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly unique and makes for a great visual. Hopefully, um, the business owner realizes this is way better than them making a permanent complaint online. So my point with this slide is to tell you that every company is subject to having an upset customer. And there are just some customers that you're never going to make happy. Uh, and knowing that is obviously, um, you know, important to a business to understand you can't please everybody, but at the same time, when you can't please everybody, you have to manage that and manage your reputation from it. So how do you fix it? Uh, well, you fix the issues. You fix the real problem in your business that the people are complaining about. 
oftentimes these are trends that we need to identify and get our arms around quickly. And then you establish a baseline. And by establish a baseline, I mean identify what your complaints are. Uh, do your research, do your homework, review Google and see what comes up negative about your brand. Uh, be sure to search through the first several pages to see what complaints are out there. Uh, look at that information on the web as valuable research that you didn't have to pay for, that you didn't have to hire a focus group to conduct or a, a research firm or do telemarketing or um, phone surveys uh, to get that information. But do establish a baseline. Uh, know where you are today in customer satisfaction as a percentage. Know where you are on your search engine results and what people are seeing when they window shop for you. And then I put in apply lipstick, which is really just start to fix the problem, start to address it, start to clean it up, um, start to tell the positive side of your business. And we'll get into more of that in just a minute. But what you really need to do is encourage real change throughout your company. And what that means is recognize that there are issues in every business. Every business could get better. But unless someone or more than one, and that's my recommendation, unless a body of people are taking ownership in this, it won't go away. It won't disappear. You can put lipstick and a Band-Aid on it temporarily, but it will continue to bite you until you make a firm commitment to changing the way you're doing business. Now, I should just clarify that that doesn't mean every single company that has complaints has major issues that they must fix, but you do have to at least consider the possibility that every business could do better and every business needs to improve. How long does it take? So the truth is it's really subject to your overall reputation issue. Um, but I would tell pe most people it takes months for real results to take place, uh, including how long it takes your company to improve their product and service and their customer service specifically. Um, but also, you know, we're in the midst of uh, several reputation management campaigns, um, some of which we've successfully improved the reputation. Now we're just managing it. Um, and so months for results, in my opinion, and oftentimes we're quoting clients, you know, hey, it's going to take six months before you start to see satisfactory improvement. You'll see improvement and you'll be pleased with the improvement, but it'll take six months uh, normally as a minimum before you really start to be proud of what you're seeing on Google. And it really just depends on how bad it is. If there's only one negative on the first page, it might take two months. But if you've got several negatives, as most companies that, you know, finally are willing to come forward and seek help do, uh, you know, you're looking at months for results, maybe as many as six, and then years to manage. And what I mean by that is, you know, it's not like you just suddenly, you know, fix your online reputation, you never have to visit again. There is a maintenance program, both internal and potentially external, if you're outsourcing the reputation management to a public relations firm uh, like Axia. And again, it's subject to your overall reputation, just how bad the damage is when you start the baseline. And then lastly, subject to algorithm changes. Well, what does that mean? That means when the search engines change their uh, algorithm, which they're known to do, uh, sometimes they do it as often as uh, weekly, monthly, quarterly. You know, I find it's typically quarterly with minor or less significant changes happening uh, throughout. But those algorithm changes can completely shuffle the deck and deliver completely different search engine results. And when you have those different search engine results, like anything else, you're going to be surprised, uh, you know, what the outcome is. And you really can't control that. You know, uh, we don't own Google. You don't own Google. No reputation management company or public relations firm owns Google and can mandate to them what they must deliver based on results. But there certainly are tricks that you can use. Um, and, uh, you know, one of those, if you're worried about Google, is uh, make sure you're active in Google Plus um, and use Google Plus as a way to encourage Google to recognize your Google Plus account um, as well as your domain and the sites that you're promoting through Google Plus. And uh, we won't have time to get in on that on this call, but we are making an offer at the end of the call for consultations on reputation management. And when we do that, uh, I'd be happy to talk to you more about Google Plus. We also have a recent blog post on our blog at blog.axiapr.com where we talk about Google Plus and how while it might be perceived as the stepchild of social media, it's important to Google. And if it's important to Google, it should be important to you. What does it cost for reputation management? Well, th obviously there's a cost of not fixing it and doing nothing, which can be very expensive. Uh, we once represented a company who reported to us that they were losing $20,000 a day and lost revenue because of their negative reputation. 
And uh, to most companies, that's a lot of money and enough money to, you know, obviously put you out of business, but more importantly, plenty of money to build a company from and around. And so for that company, it was a no brainer that they needed to get their situation fixed uh, very, very quickly um, so that they could, uh, so that they were able to turn that around and really enjoy the benefits from revenue. Uh, then there's the value of a clean reputation. Um, what would it be like if everybody went Google search for you or went on Bing or Yahoo or otherwise and, uh, and really had a great positive experience with uh, your brand and your feedback and your reputation so that they really wanted to shop with you? So um, that's, uh, that's something definitely to keep in mind. And ultimately, uh, well, let me differentiate. There's a difference between a clean reputation and a good reputation. So uh, the first bullet point refers to have you know doing nothing and just riding out the storm. Uh, the second bullet point is you have a clean or neutral reputation where no one sees anything negative, no one sees anything overwhelmingly positive. And then the third one is obviously a value of a good reputation where someone clearly sees the great search results and cannot wait to jump online and be part of it. Uh, and then, like I said, you need to establish that baseline um, and your cost of doing reputation management is based on baseline. And then lastly, and I think this is often overlooked, not only do you need a reputation management campaign, but you really need a PR campaign because you've got to clean up the negative reputation. You've got to build a positive reputation and that can't be done just through uh, reactive reputation management and managing what people see about you on Google. You also need positive things uh, to build that good reputation on Google, both offline and online. Uh, we've got a participant question. Uh, can you use ripoff report to fix your online reputation? Or is it another ripoff to use them for such? So uh, good question. Um, ripoff report uh, does have a pr uh, program it offers to help you improve your customer service and satisfaction. I've personally not ever been involved in it or uh, even recommended it to a client, but I have explored it on behalf of clients in the past. I would say you have to use your own discretion on that, but uh, my initial first impression, I didn't see enough value um, for what my client in that particular case was trying to, accom to accomplish and accommodate. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about how to respond to negative reviews on this webinar. And I think, uh, that would be a good time for us to revisit that question. Thank you for your question. Um, and does one more question, does reputation management fall under crisis communication? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I would say oftentimes people think of crisis communication as a one-time uh, crisis incident, an occurrence, uh, an event, or an issue uh, that has happened once and, uh, and kind of done. But then you can have a series of, uh, you know, crisis events that have occurred. And um, so, you know, there is sometimes some overlap between those. Uh, oftentimes, I think a crisis is something that has happened um, to a company or, um, or an occurrence, and then they've got to manage their reputation thereafter. So uh, here at Axia, we've sometimes uh, bundled those services together. We may address a crisis and then manage a reputation afterwards. Or sometimes a company is going through a crisis and we have to manage uh, the reputation simultaneously. So again, good question. Uh, keep your questions coming by using hashtag managing reputation and tweeting to us at Axia PR. I want to talk quickly, and I mentioned this a little bit already, uh, success stories. So we have helped uh, a mortgage company overcome a negative reputation they had online. At the time we started working with them, they had four branches or store locations for their mortgage company and they had big vision uh, and big plans for growth but that growth was stunted by their online reputation and they just couldn't grow at the rate they wanted to because they couldn't find uh, they're having uh, challenges selling and getting more customers they're having challenges uh, finding and retaining employees and um, you know and what they didn't mention at the time but we found out later was they were having a hard time getting vendors uh, getting lines of credit, uh, building business relationships and strategic partnerships uh, because of those issues. Um, and uh, this is the same company that told me that they were losing $20,000 a day in, in potential sales over it. So 
ballpark four to six months after we were hired and maybe even as early as 90 days into the, the campaign, uh, the CEO asked to see me. And so I went to his office and we were meeting and he decided, I just kind of want to, you know, talk to you a little bit about the PR campaign. And I really, to be honest, wasn't sure what direction that was going to go in um, because I hadn't heard a lot of feedback on our program yet. But he sat me down and he began to tell me, um, you know, really good things. And he indicated, he said, look, first of all, when we hired you and your firm, we weren't real sure uh, what you were going to do for us, what it was going to look like and, and how it was going to all pan out. But we liked your company and we liked you and we liked the vision and the passion and the professionalism you demonstrated. But now we want to tell you about what your work has done and how it's made an impact on our company. And so he began to tell me that the company was now seeing greater employee satisfaction and that sales were up and that their employees were so appreciative of the new and fresh start and the new reputation the company was enjoying. He began telling me that they're having fewer no-shows for job interviews. Um, when someone had a job interview appointment to come in for an interview after they get that uh, interview appointment, uh, he felt confident they were going online and Google searching and seeing negative things about the company and then deciding to opt out of that interview and just not even showing up for the interview. And so obviously that was, uh, that was something that he wasn't, uh, looking forward to having more of. And he said that clearly with the reputation management campaign that had improved, that was no longer an issue. And, um, and, and that that was very good, but he went on to tell me that the employees were now, uh, excited and enthusiastic about working there. Uh, you know, these weren't his words, but they were, you know, beginning to drink the company Kool-Aid about how the company was growing and expanding and how there were meaningful employment opportunities uh, as part of that expansion. And previously, you know, maybe some of the people just weren't buying into it or weren't feeling that confident about it. But as we started getting them positive media coverage and talking about their existing growth and their potential and their culture uh, and their drive and their passion, um, and their expansion plans, uh, you know, once the media started covering that, uh, in a official capacity, this really got the attention and enthusiasm from their current base of employees. Uh, in addition to having, uh, the employees be excited and, and believing and sales being up and less no shows for employment opportunities, the, the CEO also reported to me that his, uh, his recruiters um, and HR folks were seeing more applicants for the jobs that they had open. So they had several positions they were trying to fill and they were having a difficult time filling them. Now, suddenly uh, they were getting more applicants than ever before because people when Google searching or searching the web for this company were not seeing the same negatives that were there before. In addition to that, um, they were saying that not only are they getting more applicants, but they're getting more competitive applicants. So higher qualified candidates, candidates with greater experience in the industry, or just better quality candidates all in all, and more candidates with the uh, education and qualifications that they desired. So all in all, a huge uh, impact uh, positively for the company, who again was losing $20,000 a day in sales, couldn't grow at the rate they wanted to, uh, couldn't attract the partners, employees, re and retain staff like they wanted to. Um, so we worked with them for two to three years. And during that period of time, they went from having uh, approximately four locations to last I checked as many as 20. And um, our public relations program was really part of their success. Uh, we've helped a telemarketing company um, and their reputation management. And, you know, the truth is this was a, an interesting uh, scenario because the telemarketing company uh, was really struggling to have, um, uh, they were dealing with the same thing with no show candidates for em employment interviews. So they would, uh, you know, advertise jobs uh, like the mortgage company during the recession where people needed jobs. And so people were applying for jobs, but then doing their homework for the interview and then opting not to even show up for the interview without really giving a reason or, or any reason at all. And, um, in fact, uh, ironically, um, I had to uh, reschedule my first appointment, our first appointment with the company um, when they first contacted us and wanted to meet with us. And when I rescheduled with the company, I think it actually worked to our benefit because they really thought that, that uh, we had gotten spooked 
and weren't interested in working with them. And so it kind of changed the positioning of the relationship for, from where they went from, you know, uh, shopping around to where, you know, they really want to buy from us. And the truth is I just had a family matter and I wanted to reschedule the appointment to take care of my family first. And it, it worked out to our benefit. But, uh, what was happening with this company is, um, you know, they were kind of positioning themselves one way, but really doing business another way. And people were not, um, uh, were skeptical when they discovered the types of jobs were, uh, telemarketing jobs and not traditional marketing jobs or even, uh, uh, how do you say, um, you know, marketing jobs in general. Um, so part of it was kind of helping the company, you know, realign, uh, their messaging and their market positioning to be more transparent, um, because people were feeling bait and switched. Uh, and then p historically the company and some of its leadership have just done business in a, and, um, you know, either unsuccessfully in the past or in a way that was in, you know, violation of, uh, certain, um, uh, uh, regulatory environments that, uh, you know, caused them some high profile headache in the past. So we came in and really started telling their story. And the truth is, what we discovered is people love working there. Uh, the challenge was getting people to uh, get past the first couple interviews. And once you're in the door, once you've accepted, uh, you know, the industry and the, um, the type of job that you're working in, uh, they take great care of their employees and people really love working there. It's very social, very fun a lot of uh, philanthropy and community activity, but as well as, you know, uh, fun events that occur throughout, um, throughout the, uh, the business day. Um, we've also worked with network marketing companies and, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like the network marketing industry and they're very skeptical of it. Um, and, uh, that brings out a lot of, uh, either high pressure, um, you know, at home party sales, uh, type environments or high pressure, um, you know, uh, join the network, um, and sell the product, uh, uh, feelings. And, uh, you know, and so sometimes people have a negative experience with products or with opportunity offerings and they go out and say things negatively, whether those are true or not. And so, you know, we've had to help these companies kind of, uh, better position themselves, make sure their story has been told and really turn things around. Um, so what if you don't have a problem today? What if you're on this call and you're like, yeah, this is all interesting, Jason. Uh, we appreciate the webinar, but we don't have this problem. Um, well, I want to tell you, if you don't have this problem today, consider what this quote from Abe Lincoln. If I had nine hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first six sharpening my ax. What I'm thinking of when I share this with you is the idea that, um, you may not have a reputation management issue today. But what happens when you do and what happens uh, when suddenly you get negative impressions on Google, uh, your consumers see negative things on Google or they're reading negative things about you online? Wouldn't it be wiser now to spend um, the first six hours during this period of time managing your existing reputation, encouraging a positive reputation and preparing for the negative? Uh, that's what I would do. So if you have nine hours to fix your reputation, it's been the first six sharpening your ax. And let's consider today to be the first hour of sharpening that ax. And let's get busy preparing for a potential negative reputation. Because the truth is, folks, this isn't going away. This isn't a fad. This isn't a trend uh, that's just going to go away. It is trending and it is going to be more popular. And we're going to see more Google and other surgeons continue to reward uh, these consumer review sites because they are important to our current marketplace and they are a threat to every company who doesn't have the time or attention or interest in paying attention to it. So if you don't have the problem today, good news, that's great. Uh, but I would think of when, not if, meaning when we do have a negative review or when we do start to see negative reviews climb up the search engines, what are we going to do? So as I said earlier, start building and managing your reputation now. Don't wait and remember what Abe Lincoln said. How do we get started? Uh, before we jump into this, I want to remind everybody to feel free to send your questions to us uh, through the question console or continue to tweet them to us. We appreciate your questions. How do we get started? Uh, first thing is you want to fix the issues like I mentioned earlier. Uh, find the issues in your business that you can fix and start to fix them now. Because otherwise, you're just going to have continued complaints about them, and you may as well get in front of them, figure out a solution, and then proceed with the reputation management campaign. If you can't fix them, 
uh, continue with the reputation management program, but consult with a with your PR people or a PR firm on how you can better manage that those messages and tighten up those messages so that people know about those potential issues up front early and often uh, in your in your business relationship and potentially even before they hire you. Because uh, as long as you set expectations, your customers are very forgiving and uh, will forgive you for those mistakes, especially if they know about our issues, especially if they know about them up front. And like I said before, apply the lipstick. So begin making improvements to your reputation. Um, encourage real change throughout your company. Um, and this will take buy-in um, from management, uh, from leadership, from the, uh, the mainline employees, and very likely from multiple departments uh, within your organization. So you've really got to have real buy-in and real change. And as I mentioned earlier, get your story told. You know, uh, Start talking to the industry trade media for your industry. Start talking to the community newspapers where you have branches, stores, offices, and locations. Um, Get involved in that local community um, by giving back through social, uh, corporate social responsibility programs and campaigns, and then promote your good work and your good stewardship in the community. Uh, talk about the employees that you're promoting, the jobs you're creating, the charities you're giving uh, money to, the hours you're volunteering, uh, the new services, the new offices, the expansion, the new contracts you've signed, your involvement um, in other community functions and activities. Uh, your industry, your local business media, uh, your local community media, they're interested in these stories, especially if you can tie them into how their readers and their viewers and their audience would be interested in. It can't always be self-serving news, but get your story out there and tell your side of the story. Uh, you know, People are complaining about your company. Um, find a way to talk about your company and why you do business that way or what makes you unique. Um, the mortgage company I mentioned earlier, um, they went from having never won any awards in their near 10 year history uh, to where we won them uh, between a dozen and 20 awards and just in the same number of months. And, uh, you know, they were thrilled. They had never won an award before in their entire company history. And now suddenly they're winning, you know, uh, awards almost every month. And uh, that made them proud. That made their employees proud. They really enjoyed, uh, you know, the benefits and the perks from doing that. But had they never contacted us, they probably would have never thought to uh, have entered those awards. Um, in fact, we discovered that uh, in their industry, uh, turnover is nearly 40 percent. And uh, once we started the reputation management campaign, uh, their turnover dropped um, at first below 20 percent and continued to get close to 12 percent uh, during the program. So uh, that's something uh, that's pretty significant and uh, significant to their industry. Outside their industry, you might hear 20, 12 to 20 percent turnover is high, but within the industry, that was considered very low. Uh, what do we do? So what does the what do we do in the reputation management campaign? Uh, and by we, I'm not just talking about Axie. I'm talking about what do you do uh, for the reputation management campaign? Like I said earlier, you want to earn media coverage. Media coverage will outrank most uh, consumer complaint sites. So if you get on a credible, high traffic media outlets uh, and they put their article online about you, um, that's going to rank very high. So uh, obviously the Grand Slam, um, you know, uh, the, the goal is a uh, positive story, say USA Today, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, CNN, uh, those major media outlets. And obviously those major media outlets are going to outrank um, rip off report and complaints board because they, they get more traffic. Um, but not every company is going to be able to pull that off. Not every company has stories that interest the you know mainline national media. So you know, look at your industry trade. Uh, don't overlook your community daily newspaper or even your community weekly newspaper. Um, and, you know, those sites have a lot of search engine juice, as we call them. You know, the search engines reward their high traffic and their fresh content and their ongoing content. So definitely, definitely seek media coverage. Seek positive media coverage. Uh, we have other webinars about how to do that. We have uh, expert resources here at Axia, including our blog and ebooks and other resources you can check out. Uh, so please go to axiapr.com slash resources to learn more and to download some of that material. We're happy to share that with you um, as a service to uh, the business community. Secondly, get active and engaging in social media. Um, you might be on social media today, but you might not be as active as you should be. 
And most companies, in my opinion, certainly aren't as engaging. Uh, a lot of what they're putting out there in social media is very self-serving, very one-sided, um, you know, very one-way communication. Instead, you need to get involved and communicate with others. Um, we also have an ebook on social media, and I would recommend that to you. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Google Plus all rank really high. And so you want to get involved and engaged and active in those. Best practices would be to post new and unique content for each channel. You may share the same news, the same post um, on each channel, but make sure you're uniquely writing it uh, for each of those channels, not just simply mass uh, pub posting to several sites all at one time uh, with identical content. Google and other search engines don't like that. They don't like duplicate content. They won't reward that. Um, consider Wikipedia, and that has some very clear pro and cons. So let's talk about those for a moment. With Wikipedia, um, getting your article or getting your company uh, article, a profile on Wikipedia is great for search and optimization. But the negative is that um, because Wikipedia will, will rank so high because it's considered an authoritative website and a popular website, uh, but it's also driven by user generated content, meaning that the community is writing about your company and the community is posting and, and contributing to the articles about your company. So if you have a lot of complaints uh, and potentially lawsuits that are out there, those are all sourceable and citable items uh, that, that the company can mention uh, or that the, the writers and the community can mention and include and promote in your article uh, on Wikipedia. And so it's a little bit of a slippery slope, you know, to get an article published about yourself on, on Wikipedia. Uh, truthfully, uh, ethically, that Wikipedia article uh, should come from the uh, user community, not from you. Uh, but my point is you can't really control what's said. And you can obviously go in and, and remove the things you don't like, but uh, that gets policed and typically uh, reinstated or uh, uh, put back in uh, very quickly and timely. Um, but, you know, uh, if the information is not factual and not credible and sourceable, uh, then you can very likely have it removed without any major issue. Um, uh, blogging. Blogging is very important uh, because it's a platform for frequent posting and content development. And an active blog, blog is rewarded uh, by ranking higher. Um, and there are certainly uh, techniques to getting ranked even higher. Um, some companies are aggressive enough to post uh, you know, every day, every business day, several times uh, every day or every business day. And uh, the more content you can produce, the better. Um, there's certainly ways to uh, make good content. And so I would encourage good content over frequent content. But the real win is great content um, with great frequency. And then create more uh, content as well, and that is accomplished through uh, uh, that is accomplished. Great content is accomplished through posting to multiple channels and sites, um, and and get ghost blog or guest blogging, um, submitting articles to other websites, um, getting published, um, and uh, infographics and and uh, videos on YouTube. Uh, videos always rank well. And then intercept bad reviews. And, and that's something that we're um, helping our clients do as well. Uh, create a platform or a channel where customers can complain directly to you instead of through third-party websites. So really the complaint is received directly, it's managed directly, um, and it's addressed directly, which is the best way to do it, uh, hands down, no matter what, um, instead of doing it in a public forum or on a public website. And so we have helped our clients uh, create uh, web portals or websites specifically um, owned and managed by the company specifically to get negatives re, uh, reported directly to them so they can solve them somewhat internally and, and quickly and, and directly before that person begins to complain. And at the same time, encourage good reviews. And so let's talk about both of those for a minute. This may be simply putting on your statements, you know, um, or your invoices. Uh, or your receipts, you know, do you have feedback about your experience? Share it with us. We want to hear from you. Uh, the customer would probably rather share with you their experience than share it with strangers and share it online um, anyway. And uh, there's many ways to do that through business cards, through receipts, through um, otherwise. Um, but we've, we've actually uh, um, have the ability to create 
a website, say your company name uh, reviews.com or your company name complaints.com, where they are filling out a complaint form online and it's going directly to your company. And then as far as encourage good reviews, you know, have business cards or flyers or notes or emails uh, templates available to when a customer gives you uh, positive feedback about their experience, you have a call to action document uh, with written instructions on what you want them to do now that they said something nice about you. So if somebody says, hey, your company's great, love doing business with you, uh, come back, I come back all the time or I recommend my friends to you. Well, then what you want them to do is you want to hand them a card or give them direction or input as to where you want them to go share that positive feedback. Um, you know, you want them to be able to share it with the masses. Um, and that might be through Yelp, uh, through Facebook, uh, through, um, you know, other social media channels and, uh, and feedback websites. You might even say go to Amazon and leave that feedback for us. We're so glad to hear from you. Um, what we are creating for our clients, and this is something we hope to do in a, in a webinar in the future, uh, is a web-based portal where people go on your website and they make their complaint there or they file their feedback there. And what happens is if they leave you a negative review, it loads a video from someone in management saying, look, your, pro your problem is important, to, your issue is important to us, we wanna fix it. Would you please give us more information here and one of our representatives will be in touch with you and you have my personal guarantee of your satisfaction. That goes a long way with companies and that goes a long way with, or excuse me, that goes a long way with consumers and customers in the marketplace. But then what we've also uh, come up with, which I'm really excited about is, uh, if that person leaves you a positive review on your portal, on your um, feedback portal, or on your complaint portal, then immediately, uh, once that uh, feedback is given and it's positive, immediately after submission of that feedback, uh, the screen loads with an option for that customer, that consumer, right then and there, to opt in to having that positive feedback they just gave um, published or pushed to uh, various websites that, that the, the client has selected. Uh, maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's Amazon, maybe it is um, uh, Yelp and other channels for positive feedback sharing. And at a click of a button, that same review they just po posted for you can not only load to these third-party websites, uh, you know, encouraging them to post a positive review, uh, but then you can also, we also have the ability to capture that testimonial uh, and that uh, favorable review on and have it pushed through uh, the technology uh, into a plugin on your own website so that people see all of that positive feedback um, on that exact, uh, on that same website in that same way. This is really a game changer and we're very excited about it because what it does is it allows you to intercept the bad reviews and encourage the public posting of good reviews and every business knows it only takes a few complaints to um, you know make your company look bad and so if you can start sharpening that axe and building up those positive reviews now you're going to be in a much much better spot as time goes on so who is reputation management for folks it's for everybody as we went through those uh, factoids earlier and uh, those statistics uh, reputation management is for you you, your company, you as a person, you and your products and your services, um, it is for everybody. And so take a look at this list here. Uh, it's for B2C companies, retail and services and consumer services and consumer goods. Um, it's for B2B professional services and professional products. Um, uh, every business needs a good online reputation, even if you're selling just to a small industry or even to you know, a specific niche industry. It's also for individuals, uh, candidates, applicants. Uh, that could be candidates for employment. That could be, um, you could be being nominated for an award. Um, you could even be uh, running for a public office. You could be um, looking for uh, a job or admission into a college or a university. Um, colleges and universities are Googling more and more for, um, and checking them out on their social media channels, uh, potential students trying to eliminate those that are you know, not serious or maybe are just looking for partying. Um, so we talked about earlier and something that I learned uh, as we were preparing for this webinar is that uh, you know, singles will Google for potential dates or people that they're interested in or that they meet online. Um, and then we've learned this from working with our clients that uh, 
you know, CEOs are often have a target on their back and people will rant about them online and complain about them. Uh, we know that athletes and celebrities struggle with this, uh, making news recently are, you know, uh, celebrities and athletes who are poor tippers or who mistreat service workers. Um, that's pretty prominent. Uh, but I've even seen CEOs of companies who have a bad reputation uh, getting written about and complain, complained about and being pointed at, um, you know, through complaints board and ripoff report. I've even seen um, on Glassdoor and other sites, uh, managers and executives and CEOs being talked negatively about. But what we're also seeing, and this is really unfortunate, is let's say um, a company is, you know, has a negative reputation. Well, you know, some of their employees that are interfacing with unhappy customers, um, which, you know, sometimes these employees are at levels where they can't control the happiness of the customer. It's outside of their uh, authority or their pay grade or whatever. And unfortunately, consumers are ranting about those individuals online as well. And that's going to come up when that person, that individual is a candidate or an applicant for another employment position or to go back to school or uh, nominated for an award or for an appointment. And so we're seeing a lot of this happen. And, and then also, you know, um, I've seen um, CEOs and executives and other just employment candidates who have a felony or a DUI or some other criminal record. And that comes up when you search their name too. So this applies to everybody. Um, you know, Axie is really in the business of representing corporations, uh, but reputation management just goes so much further than uh, a corporate entity. And I think it's important for everyone to know. Uh, real quick, I just want to encourage everybody to uh, tweet your questions to us. Um, use the, uh, the questions panel in the GoToWebinar um, uh, feature or tweet them to Axia PR with the hashtag managing reputation and we'll be happy to uh, answer your question. So we've been through a lot today and I just kind of want to recap that this is what we covered already in today's agenda. Uh, we've got a little bit more to talk about. Uh, including the bonus, how to respond to negative reviews. But if you do have questions, please feel free to share them. Uh, if we didn't get to something you were hoping to hear from during this webinar, we would love to hear from that now and go ahead and address your questions. So um, here are some frequent questions with the bonus of how to respond to negative reviews. So first of all, carefully and thoughtfully respond to negative feedback. Um, and by carefully, we mean sometimes you are better off not responding. And I know some people have an opinion you should always respond. Uh, but I've seen claims that um, and, and complaints that, you know, truly are just um, illogical um, and unrational or, or inappropriate. One of those has been, uh, in my experience, um, I used to work at a, uh, at a company that provided uh, business to business um, telecommunication services. And we would have people call our call center with uh, serious mental illnesses who just really thought they were a customer of ours. They were unhappy with their internet or their telephone not working. And you know there was nothing we could do uh, to keep these people happy because they insisted that they were our customer even though we couldn't find them in our database. And the way we found this out was one time she was on the phone and it had gotten escalated uh, you know, way up high to management. And finally, uh, one of her family mem members intercepted the call and just apologized and explained that, you know, the person had mental illness. And so those things are going to happen. Um, and there's other cases where, you know, uh, you know, you just you can't rationalize with a customer online. So uh, our feedback is never fake positive reviews and take the complaints to a private medium. And so you'll see that the major national brands do a great job with this or most of them or some of them do for sure. And so they say, hey, you know, saw your complaint. Uh, here's my name and number. Here's how you can best reach me by email or otherwise. I'd love to personally talk to you and hear in detail your issue and your complaint. And most complaints just they just want to be heard. They want to feel valued and appreciated and apologized to. And, and that's all you need to do. Um, but then, um, uh, you know, let me give you an example. Uh, one of our colleagues here at Axia uh, tried um, fried pickles at a, uh, at a location, um, uh, at a restaurant. And, uh, they posted on Twitter that they really didn't like the fried pickles. They were burned. They didn't taste very good. And so on Twitter, she posted about this and, uh, tagged the restaurant and the restaurant got back to her, um, within hours and definitely within 24 hours and said, you know, Hey, we regret that you had a negative experience. Um, 
We are now following you on Twitter. Please direct message us more details, including the exact store. And if you can, uh, if, and if you can tell us the time and date of your issue. Um, she did so, and they got back to her and uh, ultimately had the store manager call and apologize and uh, arrange for her to be accommodated with a guest at another vis- at another time for another vis- visit to improve the experience and, and acknowledge that you know they messed up and that that's not how you know that product was supposed to be deployed and that wasn't supposed to be her experience at the restaurant. And I commend them on how they handled that. Um, they acknowledged it publicly, uh, the issue, and, and sought to connect with them privately to solve it, which is the best way to solve most of these matters. And, um, you know, and you can use Twitter as well. I've seen people use Twitter very wisely to build their reputation. So someone gives them a raging review and they, you know, they give them a surprise and delight. Um, uh, Peter Shankman is a, a kind of a micro celebrity on uh, social media and in and, uh, customer service uh, type in, in PR industries. And I believe it was Morton's that he one time uh, tweeted and said, you know, I'm back, I'm flying back to New York. Uh, can't wait to uh, have a delicious, uh, you know, uh, steak from uh, Morton's. And he said, uh, if you guys deliver, you know, I'll be at this gate or whatever. And believe it or not, the story goes, and, and I've seen photographic evidence that uh, Morton's uh, had somebody uh, at the airport, uh, you know, greeting him. Uh, with a to-go box that had uh, a steak in it. And, uh, and he tweeted it to his uh, uh, very large audience of followers on Twitter and, uh, you know, really became a great case study and example of how to use Twitter to uh, build your brand and reputation. So again, in, in, in summary, carefully and thoughtfully respond to the negative feedback. Uh, one option, although maybe not popular among some people in the business, is uh, consider don't responding, but most times you need to respond. Uh, take the complaint to a private medium to solve it and never fake positive reviews. Uh, what about Google Suggest? Uh, some people don't know what Google Suggest is, but this is where uh, as you're starting to type something into a search engine, it starts to suggest what else you might be looking for or what you're already searching for. And it does this based on the idea of these are popular searches. This is what people normally will search for. Um, and it's just trying to suggest a long tail keyword for you to search. In the reputation management arena, this is probably the hardest part to, of fixing your reputation. Um, it's definitely not easy to do, um, and uh, it takes a lot of time to fix this experience um, on the search engine. And really, it's based off of what are people searching for. So, in this case, um, while this is a um, you know, this is a fictitious example, uh, if it were a real company name, it would tell you that people are really searching for Acme Widget Scam. Acme widgets bogus. If this is your experience with your brand, this means that people are really searching for this when they search your company name. And that should be concerning in and of itself um, that people are, are searching for this. Unless you're just a major brand and people are just doing their due diligence, you should be concerned about this. Now, what you need to do and what we have can create are programs and campaigns to change what people are actually searching for. So change the search behavior of consumers um, in large um, volume uh, so that your long tail keyword is actually what they are truly searching for and not just, um, uh, and so ultimately, yeah. So changing it to be what people are really searching for and what Google acknowledges to be a popular valid search. Uh, so again, this is something that takes many months and potentially a year or more to uh, really turn around, uh, but it is very important and very critical to your uh, success with online reputation management. Uh, let's see, and what about Wikipedia? We actually covered that already, the pros and cons to Wikipedia. Some people feel very strongly you should avoid being on Wikipedia. The minute you have a lawsuit, uh, that becomes an attributable, sourceable uh, uh, content for uh, Wikipedia to promote. And a lot of companies that have suffered from negative reputations are also uh, more inclined to be sued. More questions. If you have more questions, tweet them now because uh, we're wrapping up and running out of time here uh, to Axia PR uh, on Twitter with the hashtag managing reputation or post them in the question box in your GoToMeeting console. Or lastly, after this webinar, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to talk to you uh, confidentially about your issue and your need. And we will certainly um, wish and desire to accommodate uh, giving you some complimentary direction and advice and feedback 
uh, even reviewing your current online reputation and offering suggestions of what you can do to improve it. While we're waiting for questions to come in, and please do send them if you're on the call with us or on the webinar, um, first of all, I want to say uh, thanks to you, our attendees, for attending today. Um, we wouldn't do these webinars without you, and uh, just appreciate your time and interest and cooperation. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a bonus offer for attendees. Um, we would be happy to meet with you and review your online reputation, review what you're doing now, uh, both operationally as well as uh, reactively and proactively to manage your online reputation. And we'd be happy to offer a free consultation to uh, companies who need this service, uh, need this input, want this input. Um, and again, uh, if you have other questions, um, go ahead and send them our way. So uh, one question coming in is if we do want to have a consultation, uh, how, do, how do we handle that? Just call our office, um, either call one of our local branches or call our toll-free number 888-PR-FIRM-8, 888-PR-FIRM-8, and we would be happy to arrange a time to, uh, to do either a webinar with you, uh, FaceTime or Skype or phone call, um, or if appropriate, you know, you're welcome to come meet with us or we can come and meet with you as well. Um, happy to do that. Uh, we know that this is very critical and continuing to become more and more important to the modern day business and corporation. Anyone who's doing business, whether it's B2B, B2C, with products, services, um, or other um, offerings. So stay connected with us. Our next webinar is going to be September 24th at noon. Um, I believe that's a Wednesday. Uh, PR unplugged Q&A with a PR pro, any questions you have about public relations, um, any at all, um, this will be a great time for you to ask them and, um, and just have a, you know, a, a webinar that allows you to ask questions anonymously, uh, get free advice, or just better understand about the public relations profession and practice overall. Now, this is important. If you go to axiapr.com slash webinars, that's where you can sign up for that webinar. But also on the left-hand side, you have the ability to get on our email list where we email blast and let you know when webinars are coming up and how to be part of them. So when we announce a new webinar, you'll be the first to know if you're on our webinar list. So there's actually two action items at axiapr.com slash webinar. Action item number one is to sign up for our email list uh, on the left and action item number two is to sign up for the September 24th webinar and you won't want to miss it. Uh, you may want to also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter if you're not already and as I mentioned schedule a free consultation uh, you can call me directly at 888-PR-FIRM-8 that's really easy to remember 888-PR-FIRM-8 so thank you for attending, uh, and if you ever have a public relations need, please reach out to us at Axia PR as a resource. We're very happy to have you, and we're very appreciative of your interest in this topic and our other topics. Have a great afternoon.